This episode brought to you by Van Helsing's Creature Codex, Monster of the Week's official, unofficial bestiary. My name is Michael, I've been absolutely fascinated by tabletop role-playing games for the better part of my life, and I want to suck your blood. That was weird. Um, welcome to Roll With Me. Since I began my series on the playbooks of Monster of the Week, the comment sections of my videos have been plagued by requests for one specific playbook. It's probably the most popular playbook in all of Monster of the Week, and it holds some of the most complex and mutable nuances that really set it apart from anything else in the game. So today, we're going to take a minute to talk about the gumshoe. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding, it's the monstrous. You feel the hunger, the lust to destroy, but you fight it. You never give in. You're not human anymore, not really, but you have to protect those who still are. That way you can tell yourself you're different from the other monsters. But sometimes even you don't believe that. I'm a monster! <laughs> the monstrous is one of the more intricate playbooks of Monster of the Week. It combines conventional cryptozoology with creativity and its only true limitations are the bounds of your imagination. And that's certainly not to say that the options that the book lays out for you aren't awesome. They are. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about it. When playing the monstrous, only one thing is constant. You're half human, half monster. You get to pick whether you were born like this or whether you underwent some sort of transformation via uh, bite or cursed magical artifacts, etc. Etc. When designing your monstrous, uh, the first thing you want to do is pick your breed. This defines what genre, if you will, of monster you will be. Now, the book lays out some wonderful classic options for us. Vampire, werewolf, ghost, demon, fairy, orc, and zombie. And these are all great options, but we are not only limited to these choices. Michael Sands in the book tells us that these are only suggestions. All you need is a curse, two monstrous moves, and a base attack. If you want to be a vampire, you don't have to be Dracula. You could be a, a dampier that hurls fireballs, transforms into a chipmunk, and is deathly allergic to broccoli. Now the monstrous really shines in combat situations as most of the monstrous moves are applied to physical abilities. However, there is one really cool exception that's worth discussing here today. It's a move called Dark Negotiator, which allows the monstrous to attempt to manipulate a monster, a challenge otherwise not allowed as per the rules of the game. So as a keeper, I find the monstrous to be one of the most useful playbooks in all of Monster of the Week. But before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about something that I think you're really going to dig. If you're like me and you're always looking for rad myths and monsters to spice up your game, then you absolutely have to check out Van Helsing's Creature Codex. So my friend Bobby over at Roleplays cooked up this little bestiary for Monster of the Week, and it is... Oh boy, it's, it's something. It is super useful for both hunters and keepers alike. It features 16 unique monsters and eerily beautiful illustrations, and it's all steeped in this super cool, like, handwritten, antiqued journal aesthetic, which is extra cool because it makes for an amazing table prop that can exist in world in your game. It's bonkers, the link is in the description, and keep an eye out for volume two, The Vampire Nomicon, which is coming out in 2022. And while you're looking for cool things to spice up your game, my Monster of the Week campaign setting, Raven Creek, is available for free on my Patreon at patreon.com slash Michael Wingate. You do not have to be a patron to get the PDF. It is free, but if you feel like hopping on the, you know, choo-choo uh, patron train, <laughs> Uh, you know, that would be that would be super, super cool of you. Also, I have merch. It's fun, it's nerdy, and it's available on my website at wingatethebrand.com. Okay, enough capitalism. Few playbooks give the keeper the kind of 
narrative control that the monstrous offers. Now, a, a lot of people will make a stink about uh, how overpowered you can make a playbook like the monstrous. But Michael, they say, you can min-max and make a super overpowered boop boop doop boop boop boop. Well, get your mind out of the Sword Coast because Monster of the Week is not D&D, Arthur. F*** outta here with that min-maxing bullshit. Also, the book actually accounts for this in the Monstrous Playbook. Keepers, it's all about the curse. And make no mistake, it is a curse. No matter what your hunter chooses to be their monstrous curse, it is your job to make their life, or undeath, a living hell. Or undying hell. An undying hell. Oh, you can kill a demon with a single bite, Mr. Super Tough Vampire Guy? Oops, this one had Olive Garden for dinner. How's that garlic feel, bub? Oh, you're immortal and nothing can physically hurt you? Well, the eternal emotional torture chamber that your boss holds over your head can be pretty motivating. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you have a monstrous in your hunting party and you are not using its curse to drive a massive chunk of your plot forward, you are missing out on a ton of rich material. As always, I hope you guys found this one helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments section what I missed, what I got wrong, why I'm a big smooth brain dum dum. Also, Arthur, I'm not actually mad at you. I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe and interact and, and check out the merch and go check out Van Helsing's Creature Codex. And it's all all good, good, good stuff. And, and I'll see you next time.